welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vay Ner Chuck. And this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA the internet's most passionate wine program. And as you can see, we have some guests. A little dinner table, a little more fancy than normal. A little food. I was eating a little bit before the uh, show started. Hope you guys didn't mind. And we're gonna be talking Sopranos wine. That's right, probably the would you say maybe the greatest show of all time? Absolutely. Is that besides um, Cheers? Besides <laughs> Cheers, the second greatest show of all time, and now they have a wine project, and we're gonna do a two-parter, some whites, and then we're gonna do some reds, and this guy to the left of me is the guy behind it. Why don't you say hello to the Vayner Nation, tell them who you are, and what this is all about. Excited to be here. My name is Mark Gonsalves. I can't do that because I only have a few syllables. And I am one of three owners of the Soprano Wine Company, Vesuvio Import Company, direct from Italy to New Jersey to you. The dirty or jokes. a liquor store near you. Very nice. And so, how did this happen? No, HBO uh, uh, the, that created uh, Soprano Wines with uh, David Chase. Well, Italian wine was such a big part of the show. Uh, they wanted to have a legacy after season six, until the movie, right? And um, where, where is the movie? Yeah, where is the movie? Then? Is that coming? I mean, Sex and the City's on like thirty, and we can't get a Sopranos movie. Yeah, but all those girls are still alive. Everybody on the Sopranos. Is <laughs> <laughs> Got it. So, <laughs> thanks for putting that up. So anyway, so we decided to come out with uh, some fine Italian wines uh, from five families in Italy that uh, make our wine, put it in the bottle, and bring it over to the states. So. And so what? You get a random email? Hey, it's HBO. We want to make a Sopranos wine. How does this go about? Well, I mean, it, we've been in discussions. I think it was for... the reverse. <laughs> <laughs> he was emailing HBO every day. He gave them an offer they couldn't refuse. There there you go. Go. There you go. <laughs> uh, we've been working on it, Gary, for a couple of years, uh -huh. and uh, finding the right producer, finding the right uh, the right grape varietal, finding the right packaging, and then uh, and then going to market. So now, as I'm sitting here, obviously, you know, my biggest fear, as you know, you, look, look at this guy. This guy rolled in with one of the second or third generation wristbands. So, as you know. This show has been built on the fact that I call it like I see it. I've been sitting next to Wayne Gretzky, panned one of his wines. This is a very difficult situation for me, right? I'm very scared to pan these wines because I don't know what's going to happen if I, if I rate them negative. I'll tell you what's going to happen. Please explain to me. <laughs> you don't like the wines. Right. You're going to get whacked. <laughs> you, you didn't even like, build it up. Okay, you went right Staten to Island, it. Island, I cut you up and we uh -huh. bury you. And that's it. <laughs> That's the, that's the option. You know, like swimming, them. You're swimming with the fishes. With the calamari. <laughs> with the calamari. So, no. why, why are the people at home not to think that this is a gimmick play? When you get involved in this kind of stuff, and I'm involved right now with several projects, and I tell everybody, listen, you're gonna, everybody's always excited when they have something like Sopranos or like a baseball player or like a big brand, and I'm like, no, 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 this doesn't fly in the wine industry. People see this, and they think they're paying for the brand, and that the wine is garbage. Explain to me why the hundreds of thousands of people watching this right now should not think that. Okay. First of all, there's about 100 million people that call themselves Soprano Heads. Uh, it's on A&E four times a day, uh, 29 million viewers on HBO. So we have 100 million customers that don't know we're in the business. We take our wine very seriously. Uh, that's the reason why we selected five families that make quality wine. Everything from Pinot Grigio to Chianti to Reserva to Prosecco. We're going to try a lot of those. It's in the bottle. And all I can say, Gary, is that when I first uh, decided to start this company with my partners, I went out to Las Vegas and I sat with two master sommeliers at Bobby Flay's restaurant. And we at that time, we only had five wines. Did you bring the boys? No, I didn't bring okay. the boys. I, I, I wanted this to be unbiased. Okay. And uh, those two master sommeliers, blind tasting, a la before the Thunder Show. Sure. You know, this is uh, a couple of years ago. They put it in a brown bag. Yep. Uh, literally chose five of our wines over five of their wines that are double the price. And the comment they made to me was, Mark, it's in the bottle. And God bless them. That's the same thing Ernest Gallo told me back in 1988. Well, I was just going to say that. I think for context, you mentioned something I didn't know. You said when I, we were just yapping before we got ready. And you said when I was in the wine business, when I left the wine business 23 years ago, or whatever you said. Correct. So you were in the wine business. This is You're not an entrepreneur that saw the opportunity. So you'd been in the business before. How? I worked for uh, Ernest Gallo out of the military um, as a sales uh, and marketing guy for them. Uh, route salesman, district manager, area manager, and then I was in Vermont and uh, took a, a territory in Vermont, Western Mass, in upstate New York. 
So I knew the business, and, and uh, when I was with Gallo, we represented non-Gallo brands. Sure. Uh, no Northwest. When the Northwest was just first starting yep. in 1985, and everything was Blueberry and Boysenberry before Pinot sure. had hit the, hit the market. So Long before. Long before. Now, you're, you're eating away. Yeah, I'm eating the octopus salad. Delicious. Is it delicious? <laughs> salad is Galamata. Galamata and shrimp. Mott, let's move over to South. South. We, before we get into the wine, we're at a very famous restaurant. Legendary. 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 Man. Yeah. Hey, why don't you tell them who you are and a little bit about this place where we're humbly visiting. It's all, it's all a pleasure to have you, as a matter of fact. I'm Sal. It's Patsy's Italian restaurant on 56th Street in New York City. And we always say it's the restaurant made famous by Frank Sinatra. He was a customer of ours. He knew my grandfather, whose name was Patsy, very well. He brought all his friends here. If you look at the photos downstairs that we have of all the celebrities, one way or another, they trace back to Frank Sinatra. And my grandfather, Patsy, was the first chef. He taught my father how to cook, who's been working here for 66 years. We're open since 1944. He started when he was 11. And, and my father taught me how to cook. So I'm only the third generation chef in all these years. And it's, it's an honor and a pleasure to have you in the room that Frank Sinatra used to Tell me about in. this room. Mott, when Mott came in, he was very excited about being in the Frank Sinatra room. What, what, is that what that curtain was for? I mean, what, yes. what's going on here? This, there's actually an entrance you can't see right, right over here. I that love Frank it. Sinatra <laughs> used to come in, a private entrance. We'd bring him in here. Does anybody use the private entrance now? I do. We do. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make sure he does. Yeah, well, I'm hiding out. I come up as the patch. He hides me. He sets the curtain. I go in a corner. This way you don't have to pick Brilliant. up anyone's check. He's all right. Brilliant. <laughs> And he would come up here and be undetected, otherwise he wouldn't be able to finish sure. his dinner. But it was, it was an honor to know him, and to this day, there isn't a day that goes by where someone doesn't mention that the Frank Sinatra used to come here. Well, thanks for having us. We're well, excited for the food. Yes, yes. But Nancy comes here all the time. She still to this does. Day. To this day. To this day. You always see Nancy There's downstairs. Yeah. yeah. We're very lucky. Well, this, is, this is not... Dina Martin comes in. All the kids come in now. All Frank the, Jr. generations, it's true. Frank, it's, as a matter of fact, if you... About two months ago, I got the pleasure of introducing Frank Sinatra Jr. to Frankie Valley. They had never no met each other. Kidding. And Frank's father, Frank Sr., had brought Frankie Valley here 50 years ago. Mr. Dominic Chenez is coming yes, here. Yes, over here, our secret guest for the next episode. Oh! Give, a, give, a, give a little wave to the Vaniacs. Yes. He's been coming to Patsy since 1957, before I was born. A steady customer for us. That is some serious tradition. Very lucky. And I'm having my birthday party here. We just made a deal. That's Sponsored wanna, by Soprano Wine. That's <laughs> you, do you want to invite any of the maniacs? No, the curtain's going to be closed. <laughs> no shot. No, Not even one get, lucky one? No. Maybe Gary could, Gary could come. No, no, I can't even come. You, you can come. Can I? Yeah, you can come. We're warming up here. Let's yeah. get into the wine. Let's get into the wine. You, you want to drink some beer? You're on the guest list. All right, let's pour this. Oh, that's my favorite. Wait a minute. You can't say it to the first one? No, that's what I drink. I drink. He's a white wine guy. I'm a white wine guy. And you know, we have two separate Pinot Grigios here, so we're going to review it. But what we're about also going to serve What's our matter? He's wonderful guests over here. Come on. Otherwise, it'll go spit in your sandwich. No, you don't want to do that. All right. So this is the Sopranos Pinot Grigio. Now, this one is from 2008 vintage and is from Pave. The other one is from Friuli, which we've talked about quite a bit on the show. So two very distinct styles of Pinot Grigio. This guy comes in at a very obtainable $9.99 price point. Right. And that's suggested retail. Correct. Right. So obviously some This is what you give out for Christmas, like you get a case, because I know you're cheap. I'm very this, cheap. And me and Dominic can sign them and give these out. These, I know you, you won't well, Wait a minute, you out. sign them, I'm putting them on this eBay. This is what I want, this is what I want for my birthday. But this one you'll give up. Got it. So this is the you 9 dollars Yeah, now, you give them out to like your, 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 your secretary. Uh, yeah, and they get excited. Know. Yeah, they like, got soprano wine, but you only paid nine ninety nine. Well, not at Wine Library. We probably sell for like seven ninety nine, knowing us, right? That's, mm. a, that's a problem with us a little bit. That is a problem. Yeah, I love but this. But it's a good one. problem for our fans. All right, so let's sniffy sniff this. I sniffed it already. No, sniff it again, and I saw you half-assed it. You did it here. You need to put your entire schnoz in it. I'm dead serious. That's how you get so much more aromatics. Let's do it. No, no. Like this? Like this. There we like go. Like this? Let me ask you a question. Smell that right now like you normally would. Uh-huh. Now do this. But you're going to go out with, you, with a girl you just met and stick that glass in your face? Like <laughs> Absolutely. You're going to go out with No hesitation. Man. He takes it seriously. Mm. I'm not, you know what? I'm not, you know, I, I, you know it's, it maybe it's what you like, but yeah. I'm, there's no way in the world. Do you care more about appearance than actually getting the nuances of the Pinot Vigio? I really care about my appearance. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> 
That's a very uh, easy I don't answer. want nobody going around and putting the New York Post Vinny really stuck his nose in a glass. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me this. Let me see Mark do it. Let me Mark. Why, let me see. Why Mark did you guys create two separate Pinot Grigios? Um, and why did you chill these, knowing that you watch the Thunder Show and know that I like my white wines at yeah, room temperature? Sorry about that. I'm a little, a little bit pissed off right um, now. We came out with two Pinot Grigios because, uh, frankly, we were looking for something to hit uh, a restaurant market. Uh, we wanted we wanted a, uh, a, a a lot of Pinot Grigios. I don't know if you agree with me. Are a little they seem watered down. They they, they lack structure. They lack body. Um, you know, a lot of people have been. Uh, you know, they say Pinot. They think Pinot Grigio equals Santa Margarita. Sure. Uh, and uh, you drink Santa Margarita Pinot Grigio? I'm not going to get in trouble. I drink some brown wine. That's all I drink ever. When I wake ever. up in the morning, brush your teeth with wine. it. Go to bed. When I go to restaurants, final wine. What if they don't have it? Then he leaves. Then I drink water. He calls me. <laughs> but no. But I mean, for the price, for the price, and you, you mentioned that nine ninety nine at ten dollars for half the cost of some other Pinot Grigios. It's light. It's easy. Well, I'll let you do. Yeah. Your, let's let's let do our do thing. thing. All right. Let's snippy snip this up. The, the first thing I noticed, obviously, with the white wine being so chilled, mm. it's kind of hard to aromatically, you know, pick up the nuances. What? You have to have chilled white wine. No, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of room temperature white wine. Really? Yeah, if you're a white wine drinker, like you said you I are, love white wine. I highly recommend trying. Now listen, it's 95 degrees outside, yeah. you're by the porch, yeah. you're at the shore, I get it, right? But at home, especially in the winter, if you really want to taste it, you know what it is? It's like the high school beer rule. Right. You remember when you drank that crap beer when you were 15, 16, or 21? You know, Meisterbrau. You know, Natty Ice, all I these hard Schaefer beer back then. Schaefer, perfect example. Paps Blue Ribbon. You had to get that stuff ice cold so you didn't taste it. That's what people do with the white wine. They get it so cold uh. that you can't taste it. Whereas when you really want to taste it, room temperature, you're picking up a lot of the subtleties, the flavors. You're tasting. Well, see if you like it. We're about to find out. Why is Dominic so silent today? Are you in a special Dominic's guest? not in this episode. He'll be in your seat in the red episode. Oh, I'm the white guy. Okay. You're the white guy. Thank oh you. God. Um, so what do you do after you drink it? You spit it I out? I spit it, yeah. So, he knows what he's doing. Come on. He knows what he's doing. Get out of here. This is Frank Sinatra's room. You got that's a guy right. spitting we, in the bucket. That's a very good point. We might have to drink today. It's a solid point. The first thing that comes across in this wine to me is that it is on the lighter side. It is definitely not the most full-bodied Pinot Grigio I've ever had. The, uh, the flavor profile is clearly, you know, a lemon zest, lime peel, very, very acidic, citrus, you know, right. citrus-based Pinot Grigio, clean. It is pretty darn cold, which is making it a hair difficult to totally break it down. The next one is a little bit even colder, so we might have to warm that up along as we tally it up. But when you start comparing this Pinot Grigio, it, it's in the context of, let's say, the crisp Pinot Grigio with the handprint, which is like a $12 Pinot Grigio. The Pinot Grigio market is, no doubt in my mind, the most lopsided, chaotic, brouhaha-driven wine market because you have $20 to $30 Pinot Grigios that don't bring it at all. You have a ton of under $10 Pinot Grigios that suck. I mean, just pure water, almost like drinking water with a lemon in it. And then you have really your spots where you really look for. Fruli and uh, Trentino are two areas that you're really starting to see much more quality come from. For this effort, it's pretty solid. Listen, I don't want to get whacked. Nobody does. At the same token, I'm going to stick to my guns like I always do with you guys and call it like I see it. I think it's a solid effort. I think to me, this falls into the it is what it is category. At the $10 price point, it's that 86 plus, 87 point type Pinot Grigio. Are there worse? There sure are. Recently had a Peter Zemmer, I don't want to call anybody out, but I was like literally in utter shock that I was, I literally thought that somebody poured me ice water. It was that thin. So it's got a little guts. I wouldn't say, holy crap. Oh, room temperature, temperature look at this work. Is this, this one at room temperature? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. No, use a new glass. No, it's okay. I'll be fine. This, is my, this isn't my first time to the rodeo. <laughs> All right. Buckaroo. So, 
So like right off the bat, you can taste the wine. What I didn't pick up, and this is a perfect high school beer rule show all of a sudden, what I didn't pick up at all, which I do now at room temperature, is this really nice, almost like Granny Smith green apple mm-hmm. thing going on that was completely non-existent, which is really the mid palate of this wine, whereas the last wine kind of had a big fat hole in the middle of its chest. So, this wine is clear to me that for that eight to twelve dollar price point, right in there with the top producers, to me, Chris has done a really good job for that price point. I think this stands up easily to it. And more importantly, dollar for dollar, it is a category. When you look at how much Pinot Gris is from the Alsace and Pinot Gris is from Oregon, it's just hard to produce quality under $10 Pinot Gris show. And you know what? It's not awful. Thank you. You're welcome. You live. I live. I live. So the next one, we got five, I got five more to go. All right, let's move on. We have a room temperature. Uh, no, no problem. If we don't, we don't. Let's pour the next one. Okay. You guys want to try this one? Yeah, yeah. So what do I do? I get a new Pretty glass. Early. And this one rolls in at 14 US dollars suggested retail. Again, a big lip suggested right retail. So you know, you're going to find places between 12 and 16. Sure. Um, DOC got it. DOC got it. Yep. Yeah, shallow nine. Your Vanner so. Maniacs know DOC, DOCG. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll get into that with the Chiantis even a little bit more. Um, so now, this, this is a nice uh, Chris Rich, this is the one. You Those don't give ones. away. No, I give them away. You give Those this I away. give my secretaries and stuff. This, this one? is the one I give to my family. Got it. My brother Johnny. Johnny gets this? Yeah. And what does Johnny think of it? He loves it. Best Pinot Grigio he's ever had? He loves it. Yeah. What do you think? Of the last one? First? Yeah. Thumbs up. All right. Let's get into this. Let's sniffy sniff this up. Get a little cold. But there is more going on in this nose. Um, getting a little, a little bit hint of citrus, but more on the peachy, pear-y kind of thing going on, more than apples on this one. Did, did you sniffy sniff it? I did. I stuck my did nose right in there. Did you have acid or you went all the way? I'm, a, I'm not cursed. Oh, no. I, no, it gets beeped out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't know where your nose was, but I'm <laughs> sticking my nose. All right. Let's do it. Mmm. You're, you're upset about the spinach. No, I'm not upset. I'm sitting next to the guy at uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon in New York City spitting in a bucket. I'm not upset. <laughs> You're happy. In Frank Sinatra's room, I'm patting. I'm not upset. <laughs> You're devastated. I just, I'm in a little shock. <laughs> and that's about it. Yeah, but I like you. Well, I appreciate that. I like you too. <laughs> you live. All right, so, so, Ma, you want to try this? You good over there? So, this one clearly brings dramatically bigger mouthfeel. The viscosity on the palate is dramatically higher. It's thicker, it's more structured, it's got a really long finish, and this starts getting, oh, room temp, look at this. They're gonna take care of you, we're not fooling around. I like this kind of stuff. We didn't know you wanted a room temp. Yeah, room temperature, I love it. There's a waiter right downstairs and he's in the refrigerator box right now. Going into the freezer. You see Mickey Blue Eyes? Yeah, right. That guy was in the refrigerator. I'm going to tell you something. He's over there spitting the bucket. I'm going to tell you something. So, this is the best seafood salad I've had in my life. Thank you. Bon and, I lo- and I love this. Stuff. You have bon you have almost eaten all I've, of it. I love it. I'd rather, because I'm on a different kind of diet for the summer. I'm not eating uh, the, the sodium and stuff and the cheeses. You're so I'm staying on the stay, fish. Stay fish and the, the chicken and stuff. And the wines, do you know, my nutritionist said, Vinny, stay away from the tequila. Stay away from the vodka. Drink wine. That's what they told me. And I'm going to tell you something. I wanted to bring this up before you critique the wine. Yeah. God bless my father, but before he passed away, he said, bring me a gallon of wine. And we gave him a gallon of wine in the hospital, and he drank himself to sleep. Are you serious? I swear to God. That's incredible. That's what wine is. Now listen, you're preaching. You're preaching. Hey, I'm born again, man. I love it. (laughs) So, back to the wine at room temperature. This wine, once again, and really, you know, We don't want to take away from the Sopranos thing, but this room temperature cold debate needs to be more at the forefront. The amount of flavor profile that you can taste in this wine in comparison to a cook, it's a big deal. I mean, Americans are chilling, over chilling their wines 
in a big way, you need to taste the flavors. I mean, if that's the case, go buy a $3 bottle of wine, get it ice cold and pound it. Yeah. Don't, don't go up the ladder and get stuff like this. Ripple. Ripple. Or Mad Dog 2020. Love the Apple. Bar. Thunder, you like the Thunderbird? No, we used to drink it when I was 17. <laughs> it's got an effervescence to it, too. And even it's 100% um, Pinot Grigio, Friuli. You take a look at the bottle. Yeah, I see a little. See, see a little yeah, sure. And, and what's really appealing about this wine is the acid structure. Mm -hmm. It's not too overwhelming. For my palate, I'm looking for a little bit more of the acid. It's, it's, it's lacking a hair. But for the masses, I think this is right in the right tone. It's got very very substantial legs on the finish. The, the, the finish is quite long and pretty high for this category. Who's behind this one? Because this is, or you can't say. You can or uh, can't? It's a, a pretty large um, independent um, producer Pinocchio. that makes both of our Pinot Grigios. Got it. And, uh, but different in regions, obviously. Got it. Uh, the structure is really strong. This more falls into line like an 89 point Pinot Grigio. I, I like it quite a bit. Knowing that suggested retail is 14 bones, you know, knowing that you can find this for 12 bucks, you know, or so, I, I have a feeling people would be extremely excited. And really, even though the points, 86 and 89, not that much of a difference, there's a substantial yeah. increase in quality on this one. I'm glad you like it. I do like it. You yeah. I'll, I'll give my real thoughts when I go home tomorrow. So, <laughs> so Mark, what was the history? What, did you guys start making the first one, and then when the product started to catch on, then you came out with... Um, uh, more, what do you call it, more quality wines? Well, I mean... What was the first flavor? bottle that came out? Uh, well, our first was a Pinot Grigio. Uh, we have but a, that Pinot Grigio. Pi, that Pinot Grigio. Yeah. And we have, a, we have a Pinot Noir, which is a Pinot Nero, but we can't how call it a... How many, call it a, how many SKUs do you have? Eight. We have six for the show. So the two that we don't have here is the Pinot Nero, which is obviously which Pinot is Noir. champagne? Correct. This is, this is Prosecco. This is Prosecco. Oh, I don't know. Prosecco. Oh. We have a surprise. We'll see We'll see how we do in our second segment. We might surprise our guests. With the seven. With the seven. All right, Mott. Right. What's this? Let's move in here. This is the Prosecco. No. Why do you say, hey, Ma? Mott. Mott. Oh, Mott. 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 Chris Mott. Mott. Yeah, no, a lot of people think that. I know. I know him as Mott's. That's right. That's Mott's. Are you related to Tommy Mottola? No. <laughs> <laughs> this is the uh, Sopranos. Prosecco, non-vintage, and dry. extra dry, which is a very important distinction because so many of these come across with a hint of sweetness. Uh, again, suggested retail 14 bones. So again, you know, probably to, to be had for 11, 12, 13, that range, right? Right. Though you'd like to see it 14 and higher yeah. as any other Absolutely. normal producer. Now let me see you stick your nose in that glass. <laughs> <laughs> he did it. <laughs> You got it. You got it. Go ahead. Come I on, come on, come on. Come I did it already. already. <laughs> I know. I stick my does. finger in there, maybe something else. <laughs> Wait, what do we mean? Mm. You need to finish drinking. This is the first time I've ever had this. Yeah, you didn't even recognize it. Maybe recognize this. It? Well, you looked at it, you're like, what is you this? Want me to knock off the whole glass? Yes. Really not right now. I'm gonna be bombed. That's right. He Everybody send me wants a one. driver, you know. No driver for him? You've got a private entrance, but no private driver? That's a dumb driver. Rock from the Bronx. Rock from the Bronx. You want me to knock it off? Yes. And then I want your Lakers Celtics prediction. <laughs> it, it feels like a little champagne y. Well, that's exactly what it's like. It just champagne. I'd rather drink this on New Year's Eve than champagne. Why? Because you're trying to really step up for the brand, or you just like it better? No, I like it, but I don't have to step up for no brand. I've been working for these guys for years. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's I talk like about it. No, really that's good. Right, listen, Prosecco is on fire. Prosecco is on absolute fire for Every, two reasons. Why? One, it's a pretty high quality sparkling wine, as you can tell. It's it not, is. It's not the worst thing you ever had, right? No. Number two, the price point. Champagne is is not, listen, I love champagne. It's not milking its brand, but you're paying $30, $40, $50 a bottle for quality champagne. Quality Prosecco falls in the $12 to $20 range. So it's just, it's a value play. There's well, a lot of people that have destroyed, the, in my opinion, uh, last year, the Prosecco brand. Well, because all the businessmen, yeah, because the businessmen got out there, right. they saw the market, right. everybody got hot on the Prosecco, and they were bottling crap. I mean, listen. there was an enormous amount of, Garbage. Correct. In the you could have market. this with dinner. Um, not too many champagnes you could really have with your dinner because of the before dinner. Right. Yeah, it's an after dinner thing. How about with your dinner? Because this you know what? Can. I think he's I, I, I never drink champagne with dinner. You know what's funny? I saw you jump in and do the wine thing. Mm -hmm. I actually think that sparkling wine is dramatically underrated as an actual dinner pairing wine. If you're eating shrimp or lobster, 
the yeah. kind of, this kind of fare. Right. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that pairs. I'm so tired of people using sparkling wine just for, you know, weddings and bar mitzvahs right. and holidays right. and graduation. Right. Right. We right. should be drinking sparkling wine dramatically right. more often. Yeah, you, just, you agree with that? really I, just woke me up. Can I have another glass? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you don't mind, do you? No, I don't mind at all. It's not mine. One of the things that Pat's is like doing this. is to try and get people to drink this and, and exactly. feel of it as, as not just an Look at that. It looks like, look at that. It looks like Beautiful. I so, want a case of this for my birthday. You got it. Jeez. Mark. Yeah. Mark. <laughs> Done. All right, let's sniffy sniff this up. I'll stick my nose in this one. <laughs> you know, not too much coming across. It's a little aromatically challenged. I wouldn't say there's a whole lot of nose <laughs> coming through on this. Again, cold. That's what's going to happen. There's a, there's a little bit of an apple play as well in this one. Yeah. A little, you know, maybe apple saucy, as a matter of fact. All right, let's give us a whirl. And this may be the strongest of the bunch. This may be the strongest white of the bunch. First of all, I like sparkling wine more uh, than most categories. Second of all, I'm a pretty big fan of Prosecco and what turns me off from Prosecco, and I've not stressed this well enough. And I'm surprised, and I think you guys should consider to even go front label with this. The extra dry mm -hmm. part of this product right. is really the key because it has dramatically more dryness to it than 85% of the Prosecco in the market. And for me, somebody who's more of a purist of sparkling wine, that becomes a very appealing characteristic. This is our artisanal winery. Um, their, their family's been making Prosecco since the late 1800s. It's all they do is make sparkling wine. Um, they are considered, in Italy, probably the Rolls Royce of Prosecco is Fox Marai. Yep. Okay. Yep. They That's make right. that That's specific for us, 100% uh, hand-picked. What uh, kind of production are you making on this? Mm, 2,000 cases. Oh, so it's small. Small. You know, it's funny. Um, there's a, a lot of uh, Proseccos in the market that are, are starting to get great press. We're starting to see 90s getting thrown around. Uh, but this is right there. I mean, this to me is an 89 to 90 point. I, I would even feel comfortable going 90 points on this. And at this price range, that's staggering to me. It is very substantially difficult to find sparkling wine of this quality under 20 bones. And Really, to be honest with you, and if this is okay with you, it makes me want to score the other wines a little lower because this really is completely outshining the rest of the crew. Listen, as long as I eat for free, I'm not complaining. <laughs> so I'm very, you can say whatever you want. Pretty that's, much anything. Huh? That's honest. Uh, and you're eating good for free. I'm good? Really, you're eating good for free. As long as you don't give me a check, I'm not. You're good. <laughs> now, Mark, I, you know, on your personal front, I mean, this is, you know, you, your project from the heart of labor. Are, are you also as fond of the Prosecco or are you a little more towards the Thruli Pinot Grigio? Where do you wrap up with this? We've this been, is a 90-point sparkling wine. We, we, uh, I first started negotiating along with my partner, uh, Chris uh, uh, Prosecco, in, at Vinny, Italy last year in Verona. And um, you know, the family that we met with um, was excited about the project. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about the Prosecco. It's literally a month, month and a half old right now in the States. Uh, so How many markets it. have it? Uh, right now, states two. We're in 26 markets, but we haven't taken it nationally. We're will in 26 you, states. Will you be taking the prosecco nationally? You know, it's hard to say, Gary, for for the you know for the production issue. I mean, so we're small. already starting. So where to are you? New York. At. We're in New York, New Jersey. Um, and that's it for now. And Illinois. And Illinois, so and three. Illinois. Yeah. What made you jump on Illinois as well? Illinois is uh, you know very large Italian population. Yep. Uh, great. Uh, Soprano a, fans. A, a lot of Soprano fans. We. Uh, in yeah. fact, we're going to be going to Illinois, uh, next week. Uh, Vinny, uh, next week. Excited yeah. about that? Um, well, we're going to go visit Al Capone's grave. It's <laughs> oh, a big moment. So, uh, yeah. We're excited about that. Yeah. And of course, a Prosecco <laughs> in his grave. But, yeah. Uh, pour a little Alfred. Yeah. Maybe we should pour a little out for the homies that aren't with us, right? Yeah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> All right. But, uh, no, we're excited about it. We're excited about We're excited about the entire line and offering something for everybody's price point. Very nice. Well, this wraps up really strong. We have a very big... So, we're going 90... 80, 89, and 86. Pretty good showing for the one. But you're talking about a 9.99 bottle. Absolutely. From the price and You're point. talking about a $15 bottle. Then you're talking about a very reasonable bottle of uh, wine, $14. Uh, which is almost like, like a champagne, which is very reasonable. And let me tell you something. If I'm having a party, I'm having cases of this, and I'm going to look like a big shot. Yeah, you are. Right. I have two questions for you. One, who's going to win the NBA Finals? There's two games left. 
Uh, Are the Lakers going to win the last two uh, games in LA? Oh, I'm glove tried us. Okay. <laughs> so you're not picking sides, huh? And well, number two. I'm a New Yorker. And number two. Okay. So you're a Knicks fan. Right. There you go. I, okay. I like you already. Close. Now, here's the biggest question, and right. this is a big question. Who's your favorite football team? Who, me? Yes. Uh-oh. You want to hear the truth? Yes. And you're going to say, oh, you jumped on the bandwagon. You're a Patriots fan? I was always a Saints fan. You're a Saints fan? Yeah, Saints and the Eagles. Saints and Eagles? Ooh, <laughs> yes. Ooh. As a New Yorker, you can say that you I like... I dated it. a lot of girls from Jersey Shore. <laughs> yeah. And they were all they, what? All Philly? they had... Now the kids will always say, take me to the Eagle game. And then when I went to New Orleans with Dominic, I fell in love with the Saints. What year did you fall in love with the Saints? Uh, Katrina. About January of last year. Right after Katrina. I felt bad for them. And that's why you picked the Saints? They were like, under, they were down. Come on. They were stuck. They had no place to play. You're talking to somebody who absolutely hates Go every other team. Go <laughs> Every other team but the New York You Jets. don't like the Saints? You should be a Jets fan. And that's the bottom I line. drink with Joe Namath. Okay, so what makes the problem? <laughs> because you don't play anymore. I'm but a Mets fan. Frank Sinatra doesn't sing anymore. Yeah. You like him? Well, because I hang out with his kids. Fair enough. You don't hang out with the name of the girl? He don't have a girlfriend. Yes. No, he has a daughter. I hang out with Joe Piscopo's girlfriend. <laughs> All right. We're going to wrap it up. Steals his All right. You, so we have a very good tradition. Drunk here with all okay, this it's going to keep drinking it. We get, the guest of the show gets to ask the question of the day. So oh. you get to ask the Vayner Nation anything you want. It doesn't have to be wine related. No. It could be any question okay. of the world, and they will answer it in the comments section. Okay. How Fire big, away. how big is J-Lo's butt? <laughs> and there you have it. Thank you so much, my man. Thank, Thank you so much. Great That's a tremendous question. You, with a little bit of me and a whole lot of these guys, we're changing the wine world.